In this video, we are going to learn how you can add multi-vendor features to an e-commerce site in WordPress. So let's get started. We have an e-commerce website over here. So this is an e-commerce site for plants. If you click on the products page, you can see we already have some products over here. So if we want to add multi-vendor functionalities, we will need the help of a plugin. And the plugin that we will use in this tutorial is Dokkan. So to do that, we're first going to go to the dashboard. So this is the backend dashboard of our WordPress website. We're going to go to plugins and click on add new plugin. Then we're going to search for Dokkan. All right, here is the plugin. You can see that it has over 50,000 active installations. It's compatible with our current version of WordPress, and it also has a good amount of ratings. So we're going to click on the install now button and wait for the plugin to install. Great, the plugin has been installed. Now we'll click on the activate button. Now, as soon as you install Dokkan, this setup wizard will be launched. The setup wizard will take you through some steps so that you can turn your website into a multi-vendor marketplace. So we're going to click on let's go. Here we can add our store name. We can specify who will be the shipping fee, product tax fee, and shipping tax fee recipients. So from vendor or admin, we're going to choose vendors. And from Map API source, you can either add Google Maps or Map Box. And then you can add in your Google Map API key over here. And this box, if you enable it, what will happen? Dokkan will collect some non-sensitive diagnostic data from your usage. We're going to keep it disabled for this tutorial. Then we're going to click on Continue. In the Selling Setup, we can see two options, the New Vendor Enable Selling and Order Status Change. So if you enable this, the new vendors will be able to start selling on your website. And the Order Status Change, this gives the vendors the ability to change the status of the orders. This is a must for us. And if you want this, you can enable this. But if you don't want vendors to change the order status, just keep it disabled. Okay, we're going to enable it. In the Commission tab, you can choose a Commission Fixed or a Category-based Commission. So if you have a category, you can add it over here, and then you can add a particular percentage or a flat rate for that category. Okay, we're going to enter a Fixed Commission of 10%, plus we can add any additionals if we want. Now let's click on Continue. The next is the Withdrawal method. There's PayPal and Bank Transfer by default. We can use other payment methods, but that's for later on. But by default, these two will be available. You can enable Bank Transfer from here and the minimum withdrawal limit you can set it from here so we can say after the vendor has 100 dollars then they will be able to make a withdrawal they need a minimum of 100 dollars and in the order status for withdrawal so when it's completed they will be able to make the withdrawal okay now we're going to click on continue and here we have some recommended plugins the woocommerce conversion tracking wemail and texty now these are recommended for your website if you want these you can enable this but for our tutorial, we do not need this, so we are going to just disable these, okay? But if you need these, you can keep these enabled. Now we're going to click on Continue. Great, our marketplace is ready. Now we can visit our Dokkan dashboard, or we can view more settings. We're simply going to return to our WordPress dashboard. Great, the plugin has been installed and activated. Now, this is the free version of the plugin. Now this plugin also has a pro version and for the maximum features we need the Dokkan Pro plugin. We're here in the pricing page of Dokkan and you can see that this is the free version. With the free version you can see we can have unlimited vendors on our multi-vendor website. The vendors will have a front end vendor dashboard. Reverse withdrawal feature is also included. Order management, vendor withdrawal system, store widgets and WordPress.org support as well. So you can see with the free version you get a good amount of features. But if you want more powerful multi-vendor features, you need to get the pro version. For example, the starter plan, which is $708. Now we're taking a look at the lifetime plans. There's also annual plans, which you pay for yearly. But with the lifetime plans, you pay only once and the plugin is yours forever. So if we think about long term, lifetime plans are more lucrative. Starter plan is for $708. With it, you can get everything in the free version plus some more advanced features such as the product, bulk edit, admin coupon support, delivery time, commission types, front-end products, vendor management, and much more. The next plan is the Dokkan Professional. It's available for $1,121. It gives you everything that you have in the starter, plus you get Stripe Express, Mango Pay integration, minimum maximum order amount, Razor Pay integration, Rank Math SEO, and much more. The next plan, which is the most popular, is the business plan. It is available for $2,121. With this, you get more advanced features such as 
as printful integration, product advertising, request for quotation, product Q&A, and much more. And finally, there's the enterprise plan, which is available for $3,996. Here you get one hour of theme compatibility, one hour of basic installation, live chat support, all features, and 10 site licenses. So if you want to get Dokkan Pro, you can check the description of our video for a link. So we have the Dokkan Plugin Pro and we're going to just install it on our site. To do that, we're going to go to Plugins and click on Add New Plugin. Then we're going to click on the Upload Plugin button, click on Choose File and then Upload the Plugin. This is it. Now we're going to click on Install Now. Alright, the plugin has been installed. Now we're going to click on Activate Plugin. As you can see, there is an update available for Dokkan Pro. You should always keep your plugin or theme or the core updated to get the latest improvements. But for this tutorial, we'll use our existing version. Now, as soon as you install Dokkan, you will not notice the multi-vendor functionalities on your e-commerce website. You have to manually implement them. Since we already have an e-commerce site, we are going to apply the multi-vendor features now. So the first thing that we are going to do is go to the Dokkan settings. So from here, we're going to click on settings. And from here in the selling option, in the vendor capabilities, we are going to make sure that the enable selling, one page product creation, order status change, all these are activated. You can take a look at other settings if you want, but currently these three settings will be enough for us. So the first thing that we need is a vendor. Now, if we go to the vendors section, we can see there's a vendor over here, but this is me as the admin. I am automatically added as a vendor. To add a new vendor, what we can do is click on this Add New button and it will give us an interface through which we can create a vendor. So let's go ahead and add some image, banner and let's fill up this form. Alright, we filled out the form and now we're going to click on Next. And here we are going to add an address. Now in the payment option here we can add the account name, account number and we can also choose an account type either personal or business. We can choose a bank name, bank address, bank routing number, IBAN, Swift code and we can also insert a PayPal email. And here we can also enable selling so this vendor can sell his products through his store and we can also enable the publish product directly. So if this is enabled, what will happen is once they publish a product, they don't need the store admin permission for this. As soon as they publish the product, it will be available on their page. You can enable this feature if you trust this vendor. And finally, you can also make this vendor featured if you want. After that, we can click on create vendor and the vendor has been created. So this is our vendor. Now, if we want to see the vendor page or vendor shop, we cannot do that right now because it's the page, the store list page is invisible on our menu. To do this, what we can do is go back to our dashboard, go to appearance, click on menus. And from here, we can see there are a few more pages over here, my account page, checkout page, cart page and products page. There's also a store list page. So this is what we want. But before we do this, we are going to remove some of these pages, such as the blog, and we're going to also remove the services. We don't need these pages. Now these pages will only be removed from our menu. These are still available in the pages section. What we want is the store list and my account page. These are important. So we're going to add it. All right. So now we're going to click on save menu. Now let's go back to our site. And here we have the store list. If we click over here, we can see John's store. Now if we click on this arrow, we can see his store. But of course, there's no products in the store. Now to add product, what we can do is go to dashboard and from here we have the product section. We can click on all products. Now as you already have an e-commerce site, there will be some products. Now you can add these products to the vendor's store directly. To do that, you can simply click on edit, scroll down and over here you can select the vendor and then you can click on update. So using the same method, we are going to add a couple of more products to the vendor store that we created. All right, we added some products. Now let's go to the store list again, click on John's store, and here we can see some products in John's store. Now this was the manual process where we added the vendor through our admin dashboard. But when you have a multi-vendor site, your vendors should be able to register to your site. So remember we added the my account option over here. We can click on my account and we can see our vendor dashboard. But if we sign out or log out of our account, we're going to see something else. We have logged out of our account and now we can see something different. Also, there's another issue, our menu, it looks invisible. So we're going to disable the transparent header and this is going to change. 
great, now it's looking much better. Now here in the My Account page, you can see two sections. One is the login form and the other one is the registration form. Now from here, we can see there are two options. I am a customer and I am a vendor. So your user can register as a customer or as a vendor. Now let's choose the vendor. And you can see the form actually expands when it comes to vendor registration form. So let's go ahead and fill up this form and create another test vendor. So you can actually see how vendors can create account on your multi-vendor site. All right, we filled out this form and now we're going to click on register. It actually brings us the setup wizard. So your vendors will go through the setup wizard and they can set up their store. So we can click on let's go and we can add in our street details. So after we fill this up, we can click on continue. In the payment section, we can add in the email and here we can add in bank details. We can add in account holder, account type. We can also add in account number, routing number, bank name, bank address, bank IBAN, bank Swift code and other details. And after this, we can click on continue. Since we don't have this detail, we are going to click on skip this step and then we're going to click on go to your store dashboard. So this is what our vendors will see now. Okay, so this is the store dashboard. From here, they can also see their products and they can see the dashboard over here. They have completed 30%. There are a few more things that the vendor must complete, but this is where they can see their net sales, earnings, page view, orders, and everything. And to make their withdrawal request, they can go to this section and they can request a withdrawal. But as we added the minimum withdrawal amount as $100, they need at least $100 before they can request a withdrawal. So currently you can see we skipped the payment methods. That's why it's saying no information found. If we add in our PayPal and bank information, these payment methods will be available. From here, vendors can click on edit account and edit their name and store information. Also, they can visit their store by clicking over here. And if they want to add a banner or a profile picture, they can click over here and, you know, add a banner. It takes them to the store section in settings. They can add a banner, they can upload a photo and customize other settings. Now to add a product, they can go to the product section and click on add new product. From here, they can add a product name. Okay, so this is the product name. Then they can upload a product cover image. So we added an image. We can also add a product type, symbol, variable, external, affiliate product, group product. So we can select the product type from here. We can also choose a product category. Then we can add a price. The vendors will also have options to add more images if they want. They can also add a tag from here, add a short description. Okay, they can also add a long description over here. And in the inventory, they can add the SKU, the stock status. They can also enable product stock management over here so they can mention the stock quantity. They can also specify the low stocks threshold. They can also uh, allow back orders if they want from here. All right. So then they can fill up the shipping and tax details, linked products, attributes, and much more. So once they're all done, they can click on save product and this product will be added to their store. Now, if we click on the products page, we can see there's one product added. But here in the status column, we can see it says pending review. That means this product needs the admin's approval before it can be published. So if we view our website from admin's perspective, so we've logged into our dashboard again. Now, if we visit our site, if we go to the store list, we can see there's another store over here. And now it says no products were found of this vendor. So the reason for this is the product from this vendor requires admin approval. So if we go back to Dokan over here, we can go to vendors and if we click on products, we can see there's one product pending. So in the pending section, there's one product and this is the product. So to publish this product, we can click on edit and click on publish. So now this product is published. If we go back to the store now, let's go to the store list and visit this vendor store. Now we can see the product has been added in the vendors page. Okay, so that is how you can add multi-vendor features to your e-commerce site using Dokan. Now there are a lot more features in Dokan to explore, but in this video, we just wanted to show you how you can add some multi-vendor features to an existing e-commerce site that you have. If you want to learn more about Dokan and how you can create a complete multi-vendor website using this plugin, we have a detailed tutorial on this topic that we will put in the video description. You guys can check out that tutorial to learn more about Dokan and how you can create a multi-vendor website using Dokan. So that brings us to the end of this video. We hope that this video was helpful for you guys. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more helpful videos on WordPress. So thank you for watching. See you next time.